So I was having a chat with my friend Nick Leonard the other day about the differences on how we approach um, miking up a cab. So how I like to do it is, that's what I love about this cab, is this thing removes. So I can get the microphone really close to the uh, cone without touching it uh, to capture all the different type of characteristics it has to offer, whether I bring it to the edge, on an angle, um, all different type of things. Yeah, whatever, the, whatever, whatever my heart desires at the time to try and approach. Where Nick Leonard, on the other hand, he likes to keep the mesh on. I don't know if he's able to remove his like I can, but uh, regardless, and mark it off with some tape. So every time he puts the mic there, it's gonna be close to exactly every single time. So it's gonna get close to the same results, if not the same results, whether he's moving uh, or changing different amp heads or different signals or even different microphones, if it's going in the same place, it's a good way to capture what he already knows is good for them. That's fine. Now, why I did it my way, or why I prefer to do it my way, is actually something I learned in sound engineering college when I went to there, uh, or university, where it was one of those lazy days where the teacher couldn't be shagged teaching, and just put a video on for the kids. Uh, and the video was from a Black Sabbath engineer of one of their classic albums, where they spoke about how they cut holes into the mesh to get the microphones in there to get that as close as they could to the cone. So that's kind of a thing that I've adopted uh, since then. So what I thought it would be today was, I don't know which one's better, I'm sure they're both good for their own reasons, but let's see if we can capture those different reasons uh, so we can kind of have a discussion about it and hopefully you'll figure out if something is more worth for you to lean towards or not if you're in the same boat. So I won't use this top uh, cone here because that's kind of pointing out and up which is great for rehearsing and capturing as well but for a comparison uh, I'll use a bottom one because it's more flat and uh, easy to find a linear path. So I'll set up the microphone right up close as I would then I'll put the mesh back on and we'll put it up against the mesh then as a comparison we'll do one about a meter away as well um, just so we can hear the difference between I'm sure the meter away meter away one will have a lot more air and be nowhere near as precise and crisp. I could be really wrong. I'd... We'll find out. We'll find out. So I've got a recording set up on the computer there already that I've done a while ago. So I'll reamp it so every time I move the mic uh, we're getting the exact same guitar performance play. And I'll put like a Young Lee uh, playing along to the song so you've got some visual um, representation there and a bit of yeah, something to look at while I play it, while it plays along uh, to the tunes and we'll do two different type of um, chapters so to speak for this video we'll do one where it's just the raw uh, mics being captured being playing along and then we'll do like a post mix where we muck around with each one of them to see not only capturing it but what you can actually muck around with later on in the, in the box in the studio to see um, yeah where they're actually all at. So, let me start resetting stuff up, and yeah, let's get to the fun stuff.
So before we talk about the different uh, mic distances that we had uh, for this video, first how I got the sound. So I got my GPA uh, 100 amp, which is really cool, nice, dry, nice and um, conveniently sized as well. And what I decided, because I haven't used it in ages, is, uh, let's see, let me bring that in to, to this here, the Oh My Goat distortion. This is a really, really cool distortion pedal that I haven't used in a while, so I thought, fuck it, here's a really good excuse uh, to bring it out and use it. It's not a preamp pedal, but that's fine, because, um, well, for starters, it's running through that anyway, and um, just had to push the levels a little bit more, because this has enough characteristics um, and dynamics within itself to be able to get a really, really cool sound. And the sound that I had coming in the room was phenomenal. I loved it. It was so, because um, I didn't know the results of the mics until uh, after the recording was done. I just lined up the first one and then kept it linear running through. So I was excited because it sounded really rad in the room. Um, and I was really keen to hear how all the different uh, mics were gonna, uh, well, how it's all gonna play out. Uh, which is exactly what we're going to talk about now. So out of the three different distances, we've got the close, uh, the mesh, which is just on the other side of the mesh, and the far away being a metre away from uh, where the mesh is. Now, the one a metre away, that's not a viable option. That is just, we did that purely for comparisons, and I'm glad I did, um, because now we can really see the difference between them and how the, um, how the sound is captured between all of them as well. So my biggest surprise, first and foremost, was the difference between being close up to the cab and on the other side of the mesh, volume-wise. So I got a decent signal going through when I put the close one in, then when I moved it back and put the mesh back there, I didn't need to change the volume on the amp at all. We are capturing practically the same volume coming through. And I thought there would have been a lot larger variance in what I was capturing. Uh, just straight volume wise, but uh, not at all. But when I moved it back a metre in the far mic setup, uh, I definitely have to push this more to get it up to the same volume or intake as um, the first two takes. And that's understandable, it's a, it's a lot further away. Um, I was very surprised also in um, on the other side of the mesh sound compared to being close up. Because I've been doing it close up for so many years now, for many, many years, whenever I do have the option, unless I don't and I just go straight up against the, the mesh, but this is the first time I've done a back-to-back -back comparison. Um, it was more, I feel like it was just a little bit drier when you had it close into where the actual cone was. And I thought it would have been a stronger signal and a, and a more solid, stronger sound. But actually on the other side of the mesh, um, it, it kind of picked up just enough of the outside of, of where you're homing in with uh, the microphone, the SM57, to give it a lot more body and a little bit more dynamic and, and a more rounded type of um, just overall characteristics, I think is the best way to describe it. And I was very, very surprised in that. And also too, uh, I'll bring up the wave files now on the screen uh, so you can see this because you'll, you'll need a visual representation for this. With the far mic, you can see the difference on um, how it just picks up the overall sound and not any little nuances of like stop and the start. And as you can see, a few of the wave peaks, oh, not peaking out, but the, the spikes where they're clearly like palm mutes and other type of um, guitar techniques and characteristics that you're wanting to pop through, but um, the far mic just isn't picking up because it's just yeah, too far picking up the overall sound. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a fun little experiment to do and to trial it, and now I know. Now I've done it. So um, if I had a hat, I'll tip it off to Nick Leonard, who kind of introduced this conversation. Because, yeah, he was questioning why I don't do it on, on the mesh. And, yeah, I've been... How, how could I put it? I haven't so much been proven wrong, because you don't know it, and, until you try, and it, it is um, subjective of what you would prefer out of... Uh, well, I say the first two, 
Someone might prefer the third one if they're trying to emulate like something from uh, the 70s or earlier to try to capture that vibe. That's a really good way of doing it, is just chuck the mic uh, further back. Um, yeah, I think I've been turned around. I think I'm more keen now to try um, on the mesh rather than taking off the mesh and getting close into the cone. But there you have it. There is some nerd talk and um, a little bit of nerd listening as well that we did. Hope you enjoyed it. Thoroughly fun putting it together and doing it. And yeah, I thoroughly look forward to chatting with you next time. And until then, stay safe.